In this lecture, we will do the routing for this board. So up to now, we've got a rough outline. We placed the footprints on the PCB. And uh, what we'll do is to route, well, connect the pads as indicated by these thin green, greenish lines at least. Uh, these are the rat's nests that they guide us through the routing process so that the pins and the pads are electrically connected with each other. This is a very simple board, so we only really need a single layer to do the routing. Now, if we go to the board setup under physical stack up, you can see that we've got the ability to add up to 32 layers and we will work with up to four layer PCBs in later projects in this course. But the least we can do is two copper layers, even though in this particular example, we are just going to use a single layer. Now, still in the board setup under physical stack up, you can see that you can also specify type of materials, but we're not going to worry about all that. We're just going to go with the standard settings for the um, materials. You can see that the dielectric, basically the material that separates the top copper and the bottom copper layers is FR4, which is the standard material that uh, pretty much all manufacturers have access to and is it also the cheapest. It's a type of fiberglass. So that's what we be using. So the only thing that I've um, wanted to confirm is that yes, I am using two copper layers, but I do have the ability to go two more layers than that. And you can confirm that I have got two copper layers by looking at the layers tab in appearance. And I've got top copper layer and bottom copper layer. Just a short interruption to let you know that this video is part of my comprehensive KickUt course that will teach you every aspect of creating printed circuit boards with KickUt from scratch. Go to the course page to learn more about it if you want. Find the link to the course page in the description below and treat yourself with a discount coupon for my YouTube viewers. Okay, let's continue with the video. All right, so let's do the routing now. Uh, I'm going to start from left to right. And because in the next step in the process, I'm planning to refine this outline and just make it a little bit more streamlined, I'm going to try and place all my traces as close as possible to the components and not get them to go through any of those more edge areas in the outline. Now, another thing to notice again before we start is that in my grids, I have a special override for tracks. I'm using a very small track size. It's probably a bit of an overkill for this particular design. So I'm just going to increase it to 0.2540. Uh, I think it's going to be probably better for our purposes. Let's begin. Take on my pen for the drawing of the tracks. I start with D1. One thing that I'll do here before I do the drawing is I'm going to rotate and then use the cursor to move this LED like that because I just want to make tracks simpler and more direct. For example, when I've got the LED in this position rotated, you can see that there are rat's nests that are overlapping. That's another one example here. So I want to make sure that overlapping is as little as possible. Again, in this example, the PCB is not populated by too many footprints, so you're not going to have much overlapping. But in more busy PCBs, overlapping will be a problem. And if you have too many crossed rat's nests, that is likely to increase the need for vias and that will make the design a bit more tedious. Now, still on the same principle, you see that I've got overlapping rat's nests here between pin one of R1 and pin one of switch one. So what I'm thinking of doing is just to rotate the resistor so that it looks like this. So now I've got a direct connection between pin one of R1 and uh, switch one. And that requires me to also rotate D1 so that I've got a direct connection between pins two of the LED and the resistor. That looks okay. And another thing that I'll do is I will rotate the entire battery holder. So now the rat's nests look a lot better separated with uh, no crossing. Okay, that's good. So I'm happy with that. So finally I can start drawing. 
So I've got my track tool. I'll start with pin 2 or pad 2 of the LED and connect it over there. So one click starts the drawing, another click stops it. You can change direction by clicking as well. So here in the bend, I was able to create that bend because I clicked. Connect these two pads of the switch together and then I've got the battery. So I'm going to zoom out so we can see the entire battery. So from here, I just go straight over to pad one. I'm using the middle mouse wheel to pan and then the right button of my mouse to click. Notice this green highlight that happens because it's a violation. So Kika detected that I'm about to do something that is incorrect, so it highlighted. It didn't block me from doing that, although it could. There's a different mode that would actually stop the, the two offending components or objects from crossing each other. But in the particular mode that I'm using now, it will allow me to do the crossing, but it will highlight the violation. All right, let's continue until pad two in the battery holder. All right. So what I was just talking about in a, uh, a few seconds ago has to do with the interactive router settings, which by default, it looks like this highlight collisions, which is what you saw. The green highlight indicates a violation has happened. And there's other modes as well that I invite you to experiment. And I've got a special lecture that shows you how these work. There's the shove and then the walk around modes as well, which do different things and handle violations differently. You can experiment with them in this simple example if you want before proceeding. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. And this is it. The PCB is now fully routed. I'll just remove the grid so you can take a better look and save it. Now, before I continue with any more work, I always want to do a design rules check to make sure that I haven't missed anything. This is, of course, again, I've said it many times, but this is simple. It's a simple circuit. So there are no items that are unconnected. There is one warning about the silk screen being clipped by board edge, which you can see the arrow points to this silk screen item. So this is easy to fix, so I might as well do it now. So I'll enable text in the selection filter and just drag this text item away from this circle, which is um, on the edge of the board. And run the check again. And now it's clean. Perfect. All right. So here's the board. Before we go to the next lecture where I'll refine the outline, I just want to show you how to redraw or make small changes to the existing tracks if you want to. So first I will enable the tracks filter and you can see that when I click on a track, I can then select it and move it around. But this type of movement is not always appropriate. For example, here you can see it introduces a sharp corner, which is really something to be avoided. So you also have option of other types of movement. So for example, when I do a right click, you can see there's a 45 degree mode and a free drag angle mode. If you select a segment of a track and type G, this is free angle, you can see what happens. Again, I don't think I've ever used this mode before because it's just not good. So I hit escape to exit. A better drag mode to use is the D, 45 degree mode. So select the track segment, type D, and then you can see now that you can make changes. In this case, I'm moving my mouse up or down. Or here's another example. I move my mouse left to right, and you can see that the 45 degree angle is preserved. So I'm just going to make one small improvement there. I'm going to move this a bit closer to the mounting hole, and uh, the rest looks okay as it is. All right, so just saved my work so far. And then what I'll do next is instead of going to work on the silk screen, which is step five, I'm going to go back to step two. And because I want to refine the outline, I want to make the PCB look nicer. And uh, right now it's just a rectangle 
with sharp edges. I'm going to make it much nicer and I'll do that in the next lecture.